JRPG stuff going for it, but I've seen some people make comparisons of it to the Hyper, the, the Neptunia games, which I'm not familiar with because I haven't played any of them yet. Can't say I'm a fan of those. But it's traditional turn based stuff. The, um, there's a grid that, I don't want to call it a grid system, but it's like a grid, it's, it's pretty much a grid system. Well, they'll learn new skills. They can use any weapon, but they're, they've got, they're, some are better with others, obviously. Yeah. And RPG-wise, it's not bad. It's just filled with a lot of the visual novel stuff that's in it as well so it's a lot extra yeah. it's a lot of extra dialogue as we came to the breaking that thing ha! I finally beat him but with like one health left that shit's intense oh my god <laughs> Let's load my save file on level 19. How long is this game? That would be a good question. I'd like answered. I normally can judge an RPG's length through my level system. Most standard RPGs, once you hit level 25 or level 30, you're nearing like the halfway mark. At least that's what it's been like in my opinion, in my own experience. And then I play fucking Nocturne. I reach level 50, and it's like, hey man, you're just now being welcome to the the fucking halfway mark. You ready to get your ass kicked by the rest of the fucking game? I'm gonna be honest with you. I could not do Shin I I could not do Nocturne. I could not do it. I mean, I, I mean, I beat it. I beat it, but I did not fall in love with it like every other, like every other person did when they played it. Yeah. Do you remember the details? Maybe it was because I played four first. Wait, where am I going? But uh. Oh, skills can quests can expire? That's unfortunate. Uh, mad in the uh, air wilderness. Skyscraper shelter. But like, aside from it being, uh, aside from that punishing aspect of it, a lot of it seems geared towards pissing me off. <laughs> like, I'm not even talking about the hard aspect. I mean, it was on the random encounter system, so that alone got me pissed off. The, um, I had to grind in certain areas where the enemies barely gave me any, um, experience. Some of them not even, like, after a point when you get to, um, when you get your skills and stuff set up, really, you're just fighting the same exact enemies just in different quantities, and you're gonna tap, you're gonna fight them with the same exact strategy. And so a lot of it was literally me just walking around, getting around the counter, same three enemies, I fight them the same way I fought the rest of them. Once they die, I take two steps, get into a fight with another set. It's the same exact enemy, but there's four of them this time, and I kill them the same exact way. Yeah. 
And I wouldn't have so much of a problem with that if it wasn't for the fact that a lot of the fucking dungeon crawling areas were obnoxiously long. Like, fuck, dude. That final dungeon? Yeah, it skipped a lot of floors, but I had to go up fucking 600 flights. I, I did not appreciate any of that. Time to get to work. Here goes. You let down your guard. You won't just overwhelming advantage. Take this. There she is. How's this? I'll go to. Why you? Oh, and then there was me. Shit, I didn't mean to do that. There was this there's this cam candelabra little side quest. The one that involves Dante. And you don't have to pursue it, you just need to if you want to get to the... The, the, the uh, optional ending, like the, the final, final boss and the true demon ending and all that bullshit. And... You're forced into two of the fights. Three of the fights, counting the one with Dante. But, um, it's one of the demons you can summon later, he's called the Matador, and he serves as, like, the wake-up call to those that just casually came into Nocturne, because Nocturne was the first Shin Megami game to be released in the West, and if you weren't optimized and prepared properly, he would wreck you right in the mouth. If I gave you a few original Xbox games, would you try them? Probably. When I get back into touching my 360. Okay. Otoha. You missed two of your three hits. What the fuck? I've got... You know what's funny? Hmm. Is I like Back to the Republic, but I can barely play more of it. I love Morrowind, but I need to, like, sit down and play it. Cause, like, I don't know, the dice roll in Morrowind is more bullshit than it is I honestly never found a problem with the dice roll. With me, Morrowind is just too fucking big. I get to the same place, I talk to the same people, and then I go on one quest, and then I lose myself. I have no idea where I am. I'm exploring all over the place. I find an enemy yeah. five levels higher than I am, so I get owned in like two minutes. Dude, like, I try to make another playthrough, because I, you know, I haven't really gone far in the world, and I'm just going to be playing and then play again. I start up a playthrough, and I, you know, I explore the first city, and then I go towards where I'm supposed to go, and there's fucking... Highwayman, like, hey, give me all your money. I'm like, no. And he kicked me in a And I'm like, how is the first enemy I'm going to encounter going to kick me once I get this? Like, I hear great things about Morrowind, but it's just, like, I never get far enough to see it. Especially when I don't like uh, starting a new character over and over again because he doesn't have an auto save. Oh, with Morrowind, I kind of Morrowind was actually one of the games that started my it started my um constant save issue. Cause Jake let me borrow it, the, um, the Xbox version, and I had no idea what auto-saving was at the time, because I would just constantly save on Pokemon and Final Fantasy and shit. Yeah, Pokemon makes and then, but... when I got to, um, I think I died the first time and didn't save because I didn't know how, and it was like, oh shit, I didn't get to save, so let me figure out how to save, I figured it out, and I would save like three times before I did something. Shit. Mm -hmm. 
Will you? Will you really? Nope, you missed. Yep, yep. Another thing about Nightfield Republic 1 is it's not really noticeable for three different classes. They do have their own little perks. Like, soldiers start with uh, training in the heaviest armor. Scouts have free training in And then you get to make it. You get to the part where you get Jedi. There are three subclasses of Jedi. Hmm. You pick Guardian, which is all about lightsaber combat. Sentinel, which I think is like kind of like a trapper. Oh the you fucking piece of shit. Let me get hit by something. Shit. Why is it going? Oh shit, Nene died. Well, I better get off my ass then. I have an item for that. 10% will work. Yes, you're alive, Nene. Shut the fuck up. I've got you. What about Star Killer? Oh, there's a character in this game that I have to play. His name is Index Star Killer. Me? Don't know where the fuck you went. Supposed to be in the lower city of Cantina. So, Pat, what are you watching now? Still watching Dance Over the Stars. Oh. Because you have to get through each routine, and it's just like. Another oh, interesting. Another the fast forward button, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> Just making sure. Right now, I'm watching that um, what was it that hometown hero from Sacramento? Uh, him and his partner are doing a uh, I forget what dance routine did, but it's to um the True Blood theme song. True Blood as a theme song. It's a and she fucking misses. I still think it's stupid that Twilight's getting a gender bent remake. Dude, I. Season? Twilight's getting a remake. Like, it's official though. She, she's oh, a remake. I swear that that was like the premise of one of the fucking many, many spin offs it got.